Aboard an aircraft carrier, the launch and recovery of aircraft are typically done in cycles, where the carrier turns into the wind and begins launching a flight group. Just as their launching is finishing, the previous flight group from earlier in the day starts landing immediately after. Cycles generally take about an hour and a half, and the idea is the carrier spends minimal time forced to hold its course into the wind. We don't need to operate exactly this way, because really we would all launch together and return at about the same time, because, you know, we want to fly together. We can, however, incorporate parts of the procedures the Navy uses for efficiency and fun. And by fun, I mean ball-busting difficulty and feeling like we're total badasses. The deck is always using one of three types of operation at any time. Case 1, 2, or 3. The type of operation in use is determined by weather. Case 1 is your good visibility, good ceilings, uh, VFR flight conditions. Case 2 is where the pilot might hit some instrument conditions on the way down, but ceilings are greater than a thousand foot, and visibility greater than three miles. Case 3 is when the weather is lower than that, or if it's at night. Since Case 1 is the operation we'll probably be doing primarily, I'm going to look at that uh, for right now. First thing I want to say is I'd recommend having the carrier's TACAN frequency set and active during any departure and recovery, uh, just so you've got like easy bearing and distance reference right there. Um, as far as departure is concerned, launching from a bow and a waist catapult can go on at the same time. So kind of immediately after you launch, you should make like a small clearing turn just to get a little bit clear of the other catapult before uh, you fly on the same course as the boat. So just make like a small 10 degree back and forth turn. Like if you launch from the bow, a little bit right left real quick and from the waist just a little left right. But then you would just proceed on course straight ahead, parallel the carrier's course for seven miles at 500 feet and don't go above 500 until after seven miles out to avoid other aircraft in the pattern of the boat. Beyond seven miles, you're unrestricted, so then you would just fly course and altitude and all that for a rendezvous uh, with uh, whatever your RV point is with your group. Of course, the recovery process or landing is a little bit more complicated than that. If there are already other aircraft landing at the boat, then the process begins with a holding pattern. So you might not always have to do this, but I just wanted to mention it. The holding pattern is a circular uh, five nautical mile diameter circle holding pattern with tangent to the carrier with the ship at the uh, three o'clock position. The hold takes place no lower than 2,000 feet. Groups of planes enter in formation into the hold and then uh, just kind of circle around until it's their turn. Any other flight groups that come in will stack a thousand foot above the previous group. So you might have first group at 2,000, another at three, four, etc. Um, and if you ever have to climb in the hold, you do it on the bow side. Any descents happen on the stern side of the hold. If you're not otherwise cleared to proceed to the initial, the lowest group would visually assure that the deck is ready for them or that it would be ready for them by the time they get there, meaning no one's launching or recovering. And then they might decide it's time for them to leave the hold and proceed to the initial. After the lowest group exits the hold, the next lowest flight group above them then descends uh, stepping down a thousand foot and the subsequent groups above them all follow suit. The approach really begins at the initial. That's at position three nautical miles astern of the ship at 800 feet, slightly right of the ship but parallel to its course. Prior to hitting the initial you should have most of your pre-landing checks done, except for your gear and your flaps, because you're still going to be over 350 knots at this point, so it's a little fast for gear and flaps, but you can have your hook down and any other pre-landing checks done at that point. Um, and groups can approach the initial however they need, you know, from whatever angle or however they need to, just so long as from that point on they're flying parallel to the ship's course at 800 feet and somewhere between like 350 to 400 knots until the break. And as flight lead passes the bow of the ship, they break into the pattern. Now, the break can happen anywhere past the bow and inside of four nautical miles. When you are new, give yourself like a half mile to a mile before executing the break. This will give you more time to trim and get stable before it's time to turn towards the deck. Groups keep in formation all the way until this point at the break. Lead starts the break, and then each subsequent wingman breaks about 10 seconds later in sequence, and the next guy 10 seconds after him, and so on. Spacing can be more than that if desired, so long as everyone initiates the break within four nautical miles. Now, how exactly you do the break itself is not too restrictive. The requirements are just to keep level altitude, so 800 feet, 
that you get configured to land, your gear and your flaps down, trimmed out. Uh, you roll out on the heading reciprocal to that of the ship's course, and that you'll hit the 180 position, which is being the landing zone on the downwind, at approximately 1 to 1.5 one nautical miles from the boat, just kind of depending on the airplane where the sweet spot is. So long as you hit that criteria, you can do the brake however the heck you want. One straightforward way to handle it that's, you know, that I use is to just do the same as the overhead brake at an airfield. As you hit the brake, power idle, maybe your speed brakes out if you're a little bit fast or if you want. Level altitude turn with your G's equal to 1% of your airspeed. So as you're pulling 350 knots, you'd pull 3.5 G's, and as you slow to like 300, you'd be at 3 G's. Um, when your airspeed is low enough, usually this is like 250 for a lot of airplanes, you would put your gear and your flaps down and begin transitioning to a more level turn. I've cut it down to like 45 degrees of bank or 30 degrees of bank and start trimming uh, to get on speed on AOA for level flight. Once you're trimmed on AOA and on the downwind, then you can descend into the pattern, which is at 600 feet. So it's 200 foot lower from where you did the break at. You want to arrive at the 180 completely hands-off trimmed on angle of attack at 600 feet, approximately one to one and a half nautical miles from the boat. Again, you can perform the break, however, as long as you pretty much hit that goal. At the 180 is when you start making your descent and turn to the landing deck. Once you're at the 180, start descending at about 500 foot per minute and making a left turn about 30 degrees of bank and just kind of proceed stable along that point trying to keep on angle of attack the whole time. As you pass through the 90 you'll be at about 450 foot of altitude ideally. You cross the wake at about 350 or so and as you enter into the groove the area right behind the deck you should be about 300 to 290 uh, altitude if you've done everything just perfectly. Once you're in the groove, you acquire the ball or the eye floss, that little lighting system on the side of the deck, and you use that to finalize yourself and fly down all the way to the deck. Once you're in the groove, the LSO or the landing signal officer would usually start giving you guidance if you're too high, low, left, right, etc. The goal is for you to land in the middle of all the cables. So you're trying to usually place the total velocity vector somewhere between the cables and the end of the deck. That'll usually put your hook right in the middle of all of them. Ideally, you're actually only in the groove for 15 to 18 seconds. So all of this happens pretty quick. Once you touch down, you immediately apply full military power because you're either going to trap or you're going to bolter. If you trap, you immediately idle the power, let the plane roll back just a bit, raise your hook, maybe fold your wings, but most importantly, get the hell out of the way. Someone is probably only 45 seconds behind you, so you need to clear the deck. If you bolter, on the other hand, and you don't trap a wire, your power is already on, so you will just accelerate off the deck. Keep your trim settings, keep your gear and your flaps down, just bank slightly right to proceed uh, on course with the ship again, and start climbing back up to pattern altitude of 600 feet. Check for any other aircraft in the pattern, and as long as the last guy in the pattern is behind your wing, so about 30 degrees behind your 9 o'clock position, then you can start a left turn to re-enter the downwind and uh, just rinse and repeat at that point. Are you ready for the real insanity of all this? It's possible for all of this to be done visually, with little or no communications. Planes can launch and recover without a word to the tower or to other pilots. Yeah, Navy pilots are crazy and shit hot. The only voice is often the landing signal officer calling power or left for lineup to help guide the pilot into the groove. Now for us, it would probably be good practice for us to call our positions in the pattern, like uh, passing the initial or at the break. Um, after all, our comms are a lot less crowded and less critical than the military guys, and it's harder for us to see planes visually in-game uh, than it is to see planes in real life. So we might incorporate just a little bit of comm practice into the way we do our carrier ops, but if our comm channel is particularly crowded with other traffic people in the fight, then we might just resort to doing this completely visually. 
Another thing is it would be nice if we had a designated LSO for every mission, like maybe like the ground commander or someone doing AWAC or something to do that as well. But more often than not, I feel like our procedure will likely be for the squadron leader to just land first, and then once they clear the landing area, they'll act as the LSO for the rest of their squadron. Um, now, if all of this, all of this is just boat procedures. It's generic. It's not specific to any one airframe. I will link to lessons specific to individual airframes. That's where all of this is really going to come together, seeing how to make all that happen in your specific bird. So if you feel overwhelmed right now, don't worry. Seeing all this done specific to what you fly will make a lot more sense. Along with that, just get with me to refine it all, get in a little bit of practice, and you'll have your sea wings before you know it. Lastly, as we approach the boat here, you can see that those green lights with that yellow light in the middle. You want that yellow light in the middle of the green, that shows that you're right on path. That's showing high, but that's also because the camera's high right before we hit the deck there. But that's where that uh, I floss the ball is. That's what you guide all the way down to the deck. 